Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who actually brought their daughter to the clinic. Um, the daughter had been suffering from blocked ears and visited the, um, the nurse who examined the ears and advised that they had wax. However, upon attending uh, the clinic, the, the child didn't actually have any wax. Um, uh, because of the eye clear scope, we can uh, obviously record the examination video and play it back. And they were quite understandably a bit annoyed. Um, we did some other assessments to, to kind of um, diagnose as to why the child felt the ears were blocked and um, we discovered something else. So it wasn't a wasted journey. However, whilst uh, the, the patient's mum was in attendance as well, they do also suffer from earwax and they asked whether I could squeeze them in and examine their ears. And lo and behold, um, she, ha she actually had a lot of wax and dead skin. So the patient's mum, uh, who were treating, this is the left ear, they do suffer from eczema of the ear, otitis externa, you can see a lot of dry skin around the edge, it's actually worse in the right ear, so keep watching and you'll see the right ear, so that's the left ear, we've managed to remove that blockage, uh, quite straightforward in fact, um, so with the right side, we're just at the entrance here, I'm just using the suction probe, um, so this is called micro suction, when we're using a suction probe to vacuum the ear, and I'm just going to detach it from the base of the ear canal, this is near the entrance as I alluded to a moment ago and you can see we've just released that plug of wax it's enveloped with some dead skin and the other side of the skin is also attached to the ear canal so when I um, say I've, I've separated or elevated or detached the wax plug it's that skin that skin acts like a double-sided sticky tape the underside sticks to the outer layer of the wax and the outer part of the dead skin is adhered to the ear canal so you can see that wax plug has been removed and it's enveloped with that dead skin. You can see here there's a lot of uh, dead keratin skin coating the entrance of the ear canal and it looks quite dry and irritable. So I've just now reverted to a fine end suction probe. So the standard suction probe that we use uh, for ear micro suction is called a Zolna suction probe. And the internal cavity is around two millimeters. And what I'm now using is a fine end suction gauge. It's an attachment. It's like a little suction needle, and it's a lot, the, the, the internal diameter is a lot thinner. I think it's around 1.4 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. And we, we attach it to the end of the suction probe. And what the fine end does, it's less suction, because it's a smaller uh, lumen. Therefore, it's a lot less noisier, which is, uh, because micro suction can be quite noisy at a peak intensity level, it can, uh, be around 120 decibels, which is this uh, uh, equivalent to uh, a loud um, a door being banged right next to your ear, or someone clapping extremely loud next to your ear. So it can be quite deafening, especially if it, the 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 duration of that sound is um, prolonged. And if it's a short, sudden sound, then it may not do any uh, long term or short term damage. But for a prolonged period of time, talking about a minute or an excess of that, it can be quite. Uh, definitely for the patient and sometimes patients do suffer from what we call a temporary threshold shift after performing micro suction. It's a bit like in my younger days, um, I used to go to, uh, to bars and nightclubs and you come out where it's really noisy and for the next couple of days at least or even overnight your hearing is uh, somewhat compromised and you, you get a bit of tinnitus ringing in your ears and that's just because your ears taking a battering, the little sensory hair cells there. They've coiled over, they're, they've distorted in shape, and there's a lot of chemicals, toxins, unwanted toxins within the hair cells. And it just takes uh, a few hours, up to a couple of days, for your ear to flush out those um, unwanted chemicals and toxins in the hair cells so the hair cell can recover and start processing sound again, and for the hair cell structure to recover. And similarly with microsuction, for a prolonged period of time, it can cause a temporary threshold shift. Um, so a fine end uh, helps reduce the likelihood of that. It's a lot less noisier. It's more precise as well. So we're doing delicate procedures like removing dead skin like we are here. Um, it's a lot more precision involved. You can see I've just bent the tip of the fine end so I've got better access. I'm not going to bump into the canal wall. Remember the ear canal, it's not a straight cylinder. It's got bends. It's like, an, it's like a snake. It's got an S-bend. So sometimes bending the, the instruments... Um, to the anatomy of the ear, it really does help. So we removed a lot of this dead skin. I, I left that last bit because it was clarinetting. So clarinetting is when the dead skin, when you're suctioning it, it can violently flap at the tip of the suction probe and that emits a very loud high frequency squeal. 
you're much more likely to get clarinetting with a full standard Zollner suction probe, but with the fine end suction gauge, you're less likely to get it. It's not, as I said, we did get a bit there, so we left it. Now, all this dry skin and eczema needs to be treated with medication. Um, the patient, um, uh, they do have, I've recommended actually um, some acetic acid spray over the counter. They're going to also visit their doctors as well because they do have a bit of eczema elsewhere. Uh, in addition, the main piece of advice is to avoid water in the ears. And I've also um, advised the patient after receiving the initial treatment for their otitis externa to then on a regular basis just apply some olive oil spray and what the olive oil do. So this is special olive oil. It's not for, for use in the kitchen. It's specially made for safe use in the ear. So it's a medical actual device. It comes under that classification. And um, just once a week, just to squirt um, uh, one or two pumps into the ear. To then to manipulate the ears, to tilt the head to the side so the oil can penetrate the whole ear canal and you want to coat it. And after a minute or so to drain the ear in the opposite direction. So this oil trickles out and it drains. You can put a tissue underneath your ear. And what that oil will do, it'll help moisturise that epithelial layer of skin. So the epithelial layer of skin is the outer layer of skin. And it'll just help moisturise that so it's not as dry and irritable. Because the worst thing is when you've got a dry, irritable ear, um, it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but we want to avoid scratching the ear to relieve that itch because by scratching it, you're just actually making the condition worse. So hopefully the oil will help them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.